Today we're going to go through the how-tos of wing surfing, starting with the very basics. How to pump up the wing, what the various components of the wing do, how it comes together, how to get it into the water, how to start, what type of board to use, etc. So what we'll do first is inflate the wing, show you how that works, show you how the handles work, and then try to show you how to get a feel for the wing and the wind before you ever even think of going in the water. A lot of people want to rush right out into the water and what's happening is there's a lot of people getting into wing surfing that don't have wind experience. They're not kiteboarders, they're not wind surfers. You know, they're surfers or people just coming from completely different backgrounds. So it's really important to get familiar with the wing, where you hold it, how you hold it, catching the wind, and stand on the beach for a good 10 or 15 minutes going in both directions to get a feel for it before you get into the water. But first off, we'll pump it up. So the Nash Wing Surfer has a one-way valve. You push this red knob out to inflate the kite. You push it in to deflate it. So if you pump it up with it in, I'll show you what happens. You don't want to do that. Okay, first off is connecting the locking hose end, twisting it clockwise onto the valve. Connect your leash attachment to the front leash attachment point and pump up. Each wing has a different PSI rating. The larger sizes have a lower PSI. The smaller sizes have a higher PSI. You don't need to overinflate your wing. You don't want to overstress the seams. So pump it up at first to the lower of the PSI rating. You see what happens. I did not pop my red knob out. This is with it in. If I disconnect now, all the air comes out. So before you pump, make sure that the knob is in the outer position before pumping up. Do it slowly. Let the air find its way into the bladders. You don't want to pump up really fast and then maybe catch a bladder in here. You have to understand there's this sewn structure inside of that is a membrane bladder that fills up and expands into that space and creates the pressure. You want to let it seed out where it needs to gradually. Reading my gauge, I'm going to get up to about 7 PSI. Disconnect. Put on the outer protective cap and then the Velcro enclosure then you can disconnect your pump leash. The wing surfer utilizes a one pump system. So the strut fills up as you pump up the leading edge and it'll deflate. You can lock it here or leave it alone. And to deflate, take off the cap, push that button in and everything will deflate, including your center strut roll up from the tips again, pack it away. Hand leash is connected as well to that leading edge leash connection. That goes onto your wrist. Doesn't need to be super tight, but you don't want it so loose that if you let go, it's gonna come off your, your hand. So going through the various features of the wing surfer, first one, leash attachment point. Your hand leash secures to this front connection You've got three front handles and a multitude of handles for holding onto the wing. These handles are great for being in the water, on the beach, handling the wing if you crash, be able to turn it over, etc. They're basically for that, for just turning it over, etc. Front handle you're going to use a lot, carrying the wing putting it in the neutral position, carrying it to the water, carrying it out of the water, surfing, wave riding, putting the wing in neutral behind you. And basically to start out, you're gonna to wanna to reach back and start out holding onto the front handle in the very beginning. That keeps the wing in a very neutral position. Reach back, normally to the second or third handle from the back, depending how big you are and get a feel for the wind. Just learn the power of the wing in your hands and what it does as it moves around in the wind. 
Neutral, you can always let go of your backhand, start getting pulled, start getting out of balance, let go with your backhand and just hold on with your front hand. Carrying and handling your wing surfer going to and from the beach, in and out of the water, it's really easy to carry it in the flying position, just holding the front, putting it in neutral, carry it that way. Main thing is, especially if you're not, if you're new to foiling, is if you're gonna carry your wing and your board at the same time. In the beginning, I recommend bringing your board to the beach, going back, getting your wing, and carrying it down, putting it all together. If you do wanna carry it in and out of the water together, keep your wing downwind and your board and foil upwind. Our new boards have a handle in the bottom. If yours doesn't, grab the board by the base of the mast and carry that way. But keeping your wing always downwind and your foil and board upwind. You don't want to have your foil downwind of the wing because the wings will poke holes through your wing surfer for sure. So always keep the board to windward, keep the wing to leeward. So if you come in or you're getting ready to go out and you want to put your wing surfer down, go put on sunscreen or whatever, you want to secure it. You want to secure it upside down downwind of your board and if there's a tree if there's something to put on top of it you can take the nose of your board secure it or you can take your leash go under your board and connect back to one of your handles and that'll keep your wings secured on the beach and not fly away so a lot of people are going to be wing surfing with their SUP tens of thousands of people have bought SUPs over the last 10 years and adding a wing surfer to it makes a little bit of wind really a lot of fun on a stand-up paddleboard. So same goes, carrying your stand-up paddleboard into the water, keep your wing downwind and carry your board on the upwind side. Same getting out of the water. Wing downwind and board upwind. Keep the fins and the board away from the wing. If you are someone that wants to get into foiling, right away with the wing. We still recommend, unless you're an experienced surf foiler, sup foiler, wind surf foiler already, if you don't have hydrofoil experience, we suggest you start out on a stand-up paddle board, an old wind surf board, whatever you have that you're used to that's floaty enough to get you standing on the water and learning the dynamics of the wing first, learning how it works, how to go back and forth, and ride that long enough that you can go out and pretty much come back to close to the same place on your stand-up board or windsurfer before you move on to the hydrofoil board.